Hi, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about the word order with questions and statements in the German language. If you haven't seen the German with Puppets video yet, go ahead and click on the puppets up there. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and get started. First section here says that we're supposed to change these statements into questions, and as we mentioned in the puppet show, uh, if you have a statement, it's more than likely going to start with the subject, could also start with some other stuff, but it starts with the subject and then the verb and then your other stuff, uh, whether that be the time element, place, or some kind of a prepositional phrase or whatever. So, in order to write a question out of these, we have to start with the verb, and so for most of these, it's just rearranging word order, and then we are completely finished. Some of them, however, are written in first person, and it doesn't really make much sense to ask yourself a question, and so it would make more sense to change them to second person, and so that's what we do. First one here says, Das ist die neue CD von Rammstein. In this sentence, it says, This is the new CD from Rammstein. If you want to ask this as a question, you would say, Is this the new CD from Rammstein? In which case, you would just change Das and Ist, switch the word order so that it's ist first, then das, and then die neue CD von Rammstein. And of course, don't forget to end your sentence with a question mark, as it is a question now. Second one is the same type of thing. We just capitalize ist and put it over here, and then take der Krimi, lowercase the D in der, and put that over there. And then we have sehr interessant and a question mark. Ist der Krimi sehr interessant? Is the detective story very interesting? Number drei is the first example that we have of something that's in the first person. A first person, if you think of it like this. In video games, you have first-person shooters, second-person shooters, and third-person shooters. First-person shooter is like old-school Doom, whenever you were the person going around shooting stuff, and all you could see was the gun in front of you. Uh, Halo is also a good example of this, although Halo does have a second-person version. Second-person version would be like if the camera is directly behind the person, you can see the entire body of the character that you're using, but you're not actually over the top of them, and you're only... You're only involving like one, maybe two people at a time. So that's second person shooter. Third person shooter is kind of like the old gauntlet game where you would look at the entire map from an overhead view and you could see the entire map uh, and you would just be dragging and dropping things to different places. So in first person shooter, you're the one doing the action of the sentence, which is why it says here, ich gehe nach Hause, I am going home. I'm the one doing the action of the sentence and therefore it's first person. If it's second person, you are directly contacting another person. So, for instance, on the games, you're standing directly behind the person who's doing the shooting, and that's second person. If you're doing this in some kind of a statement, you would say, like, uh, you are going home. You're going home. You are the one going, and you have to be talking to someone in order for that to actually work, so that is second person. Third person is whenever you're not directly talking to someone, you're talking about them, and so that works for the he, she, and it forms as well as the they form. Number drei here, ich gehe nach Hause, I am going home. I is a singular individual, and so we have two options. It could be either the du form or the z capital letter uh, formal version, but I prefer du, and so we're going to say here, gehst. We have to reconjugate our verb so that it reflects the fact that we have a new subject. Gehst du nach Hause? Are you going home? Number vier, Nadja bringt das Essen mit. Nadja is bringing the food along. Here we have a sentence where it's Nadja is the one bringing stuff. It's not first person, so we don't have to change anything. We just change the word order. Capitalize bringt and put that first. Keep Nadja capitalized because it's a person's name, but put that in the second position. Keep das Essen and mit where they are and end it with a question mark. Bringt Nadja das Essen mit is Nadja bringing the food along. Number fünf, we don't know if this is you are playing basketball or if it's they are playing basketball. More than likely, though, it's probably they are playing basketball because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to say you are playing basketball. Um, it's just a little overbearing. So we're just going to change the word order here. So it says spielen and z, and we're going to lowercase z whenever we move it over there. And then we keep basketball and end it with a question mark. Spielen sie basketball? Are they playing basketball? Now, for those of you who are wondering why this can't be the er s form, that's because the spiel in there, at the end, it has en, and therefore it has to be either the z formal or the z they. Nummer 6. Wir hören gern Musik. We like to listen to music. This one here, we have we. We is a combination of you and I, or another person and I. That would make it we. And since that is the case, it is a first-person version here again, and so we have to change hören to something that is plural. We have, again, two options. It could be either the Z form with the formal form, or it could be the ear form as the plural informal. I'm going to choose the plural informal and just put down here hört, ihr, gern, Musik. 
Do you like listening to music? Hört ihr gern Musik? In section 2 it says answer the following questions with an affirmative. In other words, say yes to everything and then rewrite the sentence. If the question is asked in the second person, answer with the appropriate first person. So since it doesn't make any sense to ask yourself questions, when we answer this question here, we're not going to answer with you still. We're going to answer it with I or we. Nummer 1. Brauchen Sie Bleistifte? Do they need pencils? Again, we know it's the they form because we have an en here at the end of the verb, and z is lowercase here, so that tells us this is they. So we want to say, do they need pencils? Yes, they need pencils. So we start our sentence with ja. That's kind of an optional thing. You don't really have to have the ja there. You could just say, sie brauchen Bleistifte. Ja, sie brauchen Bleistifte. Or, sie brauchen Bleistifte. If you take out the ja, don't forget to capitalize sie as it would be at the beginning of the sentence then. Nummer zwei. Schwimmst du am Wochenende? Du is a second person thing, so we're going to have to change this to the first person. Since du is singular, we're going to go with I whenever we answer. Do you swim on the weekend? So we're going to answer here, ja, ich schwimme am Wochenende. Ja, ich schwimme am Wochenende. Nummer drei. Sind die Karten für das Rockkonzert preiswert? Are the tickets for the rock concert reasonably priced? Here we have a long subject because the prepositional phrase modifies the noun itself and we have to keep those together whenever we write this as a question. So we would have die Karten für das Rockkonzert up here at the beginning and that should be capitalized for the D. Lowercase on sind so that it's die Karten für das Rockkonzert sind preiswert. Spielt der Fußball am Montag? Is he playing soccer on Monday? Here again, all we have to do is capitalize er, put that first, change spielt to the second position and lowercase it, Fußball am Montag. Er spielt Fußball am Montag. He is playing soccer on Monday. Number fünf. Tanzt sie mit meinem Freund? Is she dancing with my friend? Could also be, is she dancing with my boyfriend? But that's probably going to start a fight. So, here we just switch Z, capitalize it, and put it in front. Tanzt, lowercase it, and put it in second. And then everything else gets quotation marks. Z tanzt mit meinem Freund. She is dancing with my friend. Or, she's dancing with my boyfriend. And again, that could get really awkward in a hurry. Nummer 6. Wohnen Sie in Edwardsville? Notice that Z here is capitalized and it is not at the beginning of the sentence. That indicates that this is you, which makes it the second person, and so we should change this over to the first person. Now, because Z could be singular or plural, it could be ich or it could be wir for the answer. We're going to go with ich just because I like it. So, ich wohne in Edwardsville. I live in Edwardsville. Ich wohne in Edwardsville. Now, in this next section, it says that we're supposed to put these parts of speech together to make complete sentences. You're going to have to conjugate some verbs. You're going to have to change some articles. And you also might need to change the word order up a bit. And don't forget, you learn from the puppets that it's Zeit, Art, Platz. Zeit being time, then Art being the way in which something is done, and then Platz. Platz being a place. So we always go time, manner, place. Now, there's some flexibility in there, and there's some funny rules, but just to be on the safe side, try and always keep it as time, manner, place, Zeit, Art, Platz, also known as Zap. Some people also will say Ort instead of Platz, but then you end up with Zeo, and that doesn't really have a good ring to it, so I just say Zap, Zeit, Art, Platz. Nummer eins. Arbeiten is our verb, and we have to identify what our subject's going to be. It can't be here, and so it has to be er, because Zeit is a prepositional phrase. So we start off here as a statement. We're going to have our subject first, er. Then our conjugated form of the verb, arbeiten, if you drop your en, ends in a t, so we have to add an e. We have arbeitet, er arbeitet. Then we have to have time, manner, place. Here is a place. Zeit einer Woche is how long he's worked there, and so we have here Zeit einer Woche. Hier. He has worked here for a week. Er arbeitet seit einer Woche hier. Nummer zwei. This one is a question, so we have to start with our verb, which is already up the, the front here. We have to identify what our subject is. Everything else except for die Schule is a prepositional phrase, and so we have to have die Schule as our subject. Since it's die Schule, we know that it's plural, and so we have here schreiben, die Schule. And then we have to identify which prepositional phrase needs to go next. We have time, manner, place. We have an den Schreibtischen, which is at the desks, mit Bleistiften, with pencils, and während der Arbeit, during the work. So we're going to say während der Arbeit first because it's a time, während der Arbeit, during the work. And then how they are writing, mit Bleistiften, with pencils. And then where they are doing the writing, which is at the desks, an den Schreibtischen. And don't forget, since this is a question, we have to end it with a question mark. Schreiben die Schüler während der Arbeit mit Bleistiften an den Schreibtischen. Are the students writing during the work with pencils at the desks? 
Nummer drei. This one is a statement again. We have to figure out what is our subject so that we can put that first. Is it going to be the notebooks or the pencils or the students? Well, the verb is brauchen, which is to need. So I'm guessing that the students are the ones needing the notebooks and pencils as opposed to the pencils and notebooks needing the students. At any rate, we have here die Schule for the beginning of the sentence. Since it's die Schule, we know that this is plural. And so we have here brauchen. And then what it is that's being needed in this sentence, which is our direct object, hefte und Bleistifte. The students need notebooks and pencils. Die Schüler brauchen Hefte und Bleistifte. Nummer vier. We have here again a question, so we have to start with our verb. Regnen is our verb, and I'm going to guess that S is the thing that is raining. It is raining, as opposed to today raining, because today can't rain. It can, however, and so we start off here with the RZS form of regnen, which is regnet S. Then we have to find out, is heute first or in der Stadt? It's always time, manner, place. Time would be today. And where it's happening in der Stadt is the Platz. So we have here heute in der Stadt. Is it raining today in the city? Regnet es heute in der Stadt? The next one is a question. And we have here denken as our verb. But since we have here the word was, which is what, we have to start our sentence with the question word rather than starting with the verb. So we start here with was. And then we want to say do is our subject, but we have to conjugate denken to go with do, so we say denkst, was denkst du, and then about my mother, which is a prepositional phrase, über meine Mutter. What do you think about my mother? That's going to start a fight. Was denkst du über meine Mutter? Nummer sex. We have here again a question. This time we do not have a question word, and so we have here machen. We have two options for the subject. Either it is a cake making a baker or the baker making a cake. I'm going to assume that the baker is the one making the cake, and so we're going to use the baker as the subject. And so we have here macht der Bäcker einen Kuchen, which comes next because that's the direct object. It's en at the end of einen because it's the direct object, and it's a masculine direct object. In der Küche is in the kitchen. Nach dem Spiel is after the game. After the game is actually a time thing here, so we have nach dem Spiel first. And then we follow it up with in der Küche. Macht der Bäcker einen Kuchen nach dem Spiel in der Küche? Is the baker making a cake after the game in the kitchen? Nummer sieben. We have here again a statement, so we have to figure out what is our subject. We have either the fish who are eating or the people who are eating. Let's go with the people eating the fish as opposed to the fish eating the people, because that would just be weird. So, we start off here with die Leute. Die Leute is plural, and therefore the conjugation of Essen is Essen which is convenient because if it were not that, it would have to be an irregular verb, and let's just not get into that yet. What is being eaten here is den Fisch, the fish. Now we have to figure out time, manner, place. We have in dem Restaurant, which is in the restaurant, and that is, of course, the place. Heute Abend, which is this evening, and that is time. Mit einer Gabel, with a fork, and that's how they're eating it. So we start off here with the time one, heute Abend. Followed by at, or the way in which someone is eating it, and that is mit einer Gabel. And then, of course, we have in dem Restaurant. Die Leute essen den Fisch heute Abend mit einer Gabel in dem Restaurant. The people are eating the fish this evening with a fork in the restaurant. Nummer 8. We have here a question mark at the end of it, so we have to have a question. And we have here the verb gehen. Um drei Uhr and in die Stadt are both prepositional phrases, so they cannot be our subject, which leaves us with du. Du has to be our subject here, so we say gehst, because that's the conjugation that goes with du. Gehst du. And then um drei Uhr, because that's the time element. In die Stadt. Into the city, because that's the place. Gehst du um drei Uhr in die Stadt? Are you going into the city at 3 o'clock? That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out some of the other stuff on my channel. You can see some Märchen or some Lieder, or you can see more of these worksheet explanation videos, or some more German with puppets. Just click around on the little boxes that are up there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.